I went out to find the fastest way to analyze data on Excel and get instant results. Although this process may seem like a shortcut to analyzing data manually, the time it takes for the algorithm to run is only 15 seconds and this is how it looks like when it is in operation. So in order to test this feature, I set out to find the perfect data set to conduct an exploratory data analysis. All right, so here we are on cargo.com and I have this bank transaction data set that looks really simple and quite straight to the point. It has over 100,000 rows and nine columns, super ideal for the type of experiment we're about to carry out. So I'm gonna go ahead to download this data set. And the first thing you do when you download any data set is to check if it needs to be cleaned. And that will mean going through the columns to check if there are any inconsistencies you would like to fix. Although most data sets on cargo come cleaned and this data set is no different, it's always a good feeling when you don't have to clean your data. But what is not a good feeling is seeing all these account numbers that have transactions in hundreds of millions and even billions. So I don't know how you finance folks do it, but I mean, this is starting to get me off. So zooming into the data, we have account number, date, transaction details, check number, value date, withdrawal amount, deposit amount, and balance amount. Now, before we start anything, we need to carry out some data transformational steps. And the very first step of this process is to duplicate and create a copy of our data set. Now, this is a personal preference for me. I like to do this because for this data set, we're gonna be moving things around a lot. We're gonna be adding columns, removing columns. So to keep the original copy, we're gonna go ahead to duplicate this data set. So to do that, just move your cursor to the bottom left corner where it says sheet one, right click on that and select move data to end of sheets and also select create a copy. You can also rename the sheets to keep things tidy. Zooming into the account number column, we have about 10 account numbers here and it can be very difficult differentiating each one of the account numbers. So for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to assign names to each of the account number. So to do that, let's copy the entire column details for the account number and then move that into a new sheet, remove duplicates to get unique values. Now you can assign names to each of the account numbers. And then we're gonna bring that information back to this data sheet. So create a new column in the data and do a VLOOKUP to bring your named values into your data sets. So now that we have the names replaced, we can remove the formula by copying the entire range and pasting values. The last transformational step that we want to do on this data set involves adding a transaction type column. Now we want to be able to identify whether each transaction is a credit or debit transaction and aggregate all that information into one column. So to do that, we're gonna write a simple formula using the data on the deposits and withdrawal column to say that if any of the cell is blank, then return an alternate value. That means if there is a blank cell on the deposit column, then that transaction is a withdrawal. And if there is a blank cell on the withdrawal column, it means that transaction is a deposit. So we're gonna drag down the formula into the below cells Okay, so now that we're done with the data transformation steps, I have some question in mind that I hope this tool will help us answer. What is the total deposit and total withdrawals across the different accounts? What is the closing balance across the different accounts? And finally, what is the trend of transaction activity across different accounts? So let's run the data analyze feature on our transform data sets. So let's take a look. Unfortunately, none of the questions we hope to answer were part of the insights. So let's ask on the search bar one of the questions. So we can ask total withdrawal amount and total deposit amount for each account. And in two seconds, we have an answer. And we can insert that into a pivot table. For question two, 
We want to know the closing balance across all the accounts. And after many trials, it only came up with the sum and the average balance for each account number. I don't think that is quite what we want because sum of the balance amount doesn't make any sense. Average mm, could make sense, but really that's not what we want. So I guess because to get the closing balance, the model has to subtract withdrawals from deposits. And I'm not sure it is it can do that level of calculation. So I'm going to say it failed this one. The third question is the trend of activity across each account. Now we know we can write it this way. Transaction activity means deposit and withdrawal activity over time. So we can write deposit amount and withdraw amount by year for each account name. Again, we have an answer and I'm just going to insert it as a pivot table. Now, having successfully answered question one and question three, let's check out some other insights that this generated. We can see here that Ada has a noticeably lower balance amount compared to others, while Lola has a higher deposit amount and also a higher withdrawal amount on our account. Now, this is a good starting point for our analysis. We can choose to explore further, especially for question two, which the algorithm failed to answer. So let's go into the pivot table that we initially created from question one and insert a calculated column to show the difference between the credit amount and the debit amount for each account. So to do that, go to the pivot table, analyze ribbon and select where it says fields, items and set and then select calculated column. Immediately the calculated column field window opens and in the name part, you're gonna give your new field a name, more like a column name. So we're just gonna call it closing balance. Next is the formula. We know that to calculate closing balance, we need to subtract withdrawal amount from deposit amounts. So now go ahead to select deposit amount minus withdraw amount and then click OK and a new calculated column can be seen on the pivot table. So that's how you analyze data using Excel's data analyze feature. Is it really the fastest means of analyzing data? Well, that depends on who is using it. For a beginner who doesn't know how to manipulate pivot tables, pivot charts, it's certainly a faster approach. An expert, on the other hand, can use it to do the heavy lifting and get your analysis started before manually taking over. And in 15 seconds, you can have something to build on without having to start exploring from the scratch. So links to the data set is in the description below. Go ahead and play around with it and share with me the insights that you find. All right, guys, that's the video. Do hit the like button if you found this video useful and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.